Did you know that our moon is slowly but surely abandoning us? That's right, the moon, our loyal celestial companion, is gradually moving away from us at an astonishing rate of 3.8 centimeters per year. This might seem insignificant now, but over time, this lunar retreat could have profound implications for our planet. So why is this happening? What does it mean for us? And what might a future without our night's light look like? Don't worry, we've got you covered. Let's dive into the science behind this lunar retreat. The moon's departure is all thanks to gravity, Earth's rotation, and the tides. Take a moment to imagine the Earth and moon locked in a cosmic tug of war. Gravity, that invisible force we often take for granted, is the rope in this game. The moon's gravity pulls on our planet, causing a slight elongation. This elongation is most noticeable in the form of ocean tides, those rhythmic rises and falls of sea levels we're all familiar with. But there's a twist. As the Earth spins on its axis, the bulges caused by the tides aren't perfectly aligned with the moon. They are slightly ahead due to the Earth's rotation. This results in these bulges exerting a small gravitational pull on the moon, giving it a slight nudge. This nudge, over time, propels the moon into a higher orbit around the Earth, causing it to drift away at a rate of approximately one and a half inches per year. So, in essence, the dance between the Earth and moon, powered by gravitational forces and the Earth's rotation, is causing our lunar companion to slowly slip away. This phenomenon, known as lunar retreat, has been happening for billions of years. But it's not just the Earth's rotation and tides responsible for this lunar goodbye. The slowdown of our planet's spin also plays a crucial part. As the moon moves away, it takes a bit of Earth's rotational energy with it. This energy transfer results in the Earth spinning more slowly on its axis, subtly lengthening our days. But the story doesn't end there. The moon's exit is also influenced by another factor, continental drift. This slow and steady shift of the Earth's landmasses also affects the rate at which the moon is moving away. But let's save that for the next chapter of our lunar tale. Continental drift, believe it or not, has a significant impact on the moon's movement. Now you might be wondering, what does the shifting of the Earth's crust have to do with our moon drifting away? Well, it's a fascinating relationship, let me explain. Picture the Earth as a spinning top. As the continents shift around, they affect the distribution of Earth's mass, which in turn impacts the rate at which our planet spins. The moon's gravity tugs on Earth, causing tides and slowing down its rotation. As the Earth's spin slows, the moon gains energy and moves slightly further away, a process known as the moon's recession. But here's where continental drift comes into play. As Earth's land masses shift and collide, they alter the planet's shape and the distribution of its mass. This, in turn, affects the rate of Earth's rotation and, consequently, the speed at which the moon is receding. In the past, continental drift has acted as a bit of a break, slowing the moon's recession. This means that the moon's departure from us has not been a constant, steady process, but one that has varied over billions of years. In fact, the role of continental drift is so significant that it pushes back the estimated date of separation between the moon and Earth by several billion years. That's right, several billion years. It's a testament to the interconnectedness of celestial and terrestrial phenomena and the complex dance they perform over eons. Yet, despite these factors slowing the moon's departure, it continues to drift away. So how do scientists measure this slow lunar retreat, you might wonder? Well, it's all thanks to some clever thinking and a bit of leftover equipment from the Apollo missions. That's right, the very same missions that sent humans walking on the lunar surface over half a century ago. Astronauts from these missions didn't just leave footprints and a flag on the moon. They also left something else, mirrors, specifically designed to reflect light directly back to its source. These aren't your everyday bathroom mirrors, though. They're called retro reflectors, and they've been playing a crucial role in our understanding of the moon's gradual retreat. So how does it work? Scientists here on Earth use powerful lasers, aiming them precisely at these retro reflectors on the moon. The lasers emit pulses of light, which then travel the nearly 240,000 miles to the moon. Upon reaching the moon, these pulses of light hit the retro reflectors and are sent straight back to Earth. The time it takes for the light to make this round trip is carefully measured. And since we know the speed of light is a constant, scientists can use this information to calculate the exact distance between the Earth and the moon at any given moment. Over time, by regularly repeating this process, we've been able to detect the moon's slow but steady retreat from us. This method is incredibly accurate. In fact, it's so precise that it allows us to measure the moon's retreat to within a few millimeters per year. And it's not just a one-way process. The moon's gravity also affects the Earth, causing it to wobble slightly in its rotation. 
This too can be measured using the same method, providing us with a comprehensive picture of this celestial dance between our planet and its moon. It's fascinating, isn't it? And the implications of this retreat are even more so. As the moon drifts away, our world will change in profound ways. What could be more emblematic of change than the shifting of celestial bodies? The moon's retreat, albeit slow, will bring about significant transformations. Picture this, longer days that stretch out leisurely as the Earth's rotation slows down due to the decreasing gravitational pull of the moon. We currently experience 24-hour days, but with the moon's retreat, we could be looking at days that last longer, a lot longer. Imagine having more time in a day, quite literally. But it's not all rosy. In about 600 million years, the moon will no longer be close enough to cause total solar eclipses. These breathtaking celestial events, where the moon perfectly obscures the sun, will become a thing of the past, a tale for the history books. Instead of total eclipses, we'll only witness partial or annular ones. The sun's corona, a mesmerizing sight during total eclipses, will remain unseen by future generations. But the most dramatic event is saved for the distant future, billions of years from now. The sun, in its final stages, will expand and become a red giant. It will engulf not just the moon, but the Earth as well, a fiery end for our planet and its faithful satellite. While these changes may seem cataclysmic, they're part of the natural life cycle of celestial bodies. Just as stars are born and die, moons drift away and planets evolve. While the moon's departure may seem melancholic, it's a testament to the dynamic and ever-evolving nature of our universe. It's a reminder of the impermanence of things, even those as seemingly constant as the moon in our sky. But until that day comes, let's continue to gaze upon our moon, appreciating its beauty and the mysteries it still holds. So there you have it, the tale of our moon's great escape. This journey, set in motion by gravity, Earth's rotation, tides, and continental drift, is a testament to the celestial dance that shapes our universe. With the help of lasers and mirrors, we've measured this retreat, piecing together a story that spans billions of years. But it's not just history, it's our future too. As the moon drifts away, Earth will change in ways we can only imagine. Remember to like, subscribe, and share your thoughts in the comments. Until next time, keep looking up and wondering about the mysteries of our universe.